Hello and welcome to the Crochet Cakes YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to start the Shield Maiden top, which is a top that I have here to share with you. This video is meant to accompany the written pattern for the Shield Maiden top. As such, I encourage you to please check that out for all the details as well as the instructions and the materials that you will need to complete this pattern. In the pattern page you will find the yarn that we're using the hook sizes that we're using the measurements as well as the stitches that we will need to complete this pattern the pattern comes in three sizes um, I will be making with you today the smallest size so please grab your yarn and your hook and let's get started as I said the first thing we need is our written pattern and you can find that in the description box below I have the Spanish version here and you will also need some yarn today I'm using this cotton yarn 100% cotton Casa Sol Filicolor which is a combed cotton yarn it's very very different from the yarn that I designed the pattern with that yarn is over here and it's burn that maker home deck which we can see is a kind of a knit tube of fabric that is then filled with some nylon stuffing and it creates a very different fabric and this is more the casa sol filicolor is more of a heavy worsted uh, yarn than it is bulky we will also be using an eight millimeter crochet hook to start the pattern which is the hook that is recommended in the pattern so to start with following along with your written pattern I'm going to be making the smallest size so we will make 53 chains okay and as I said I assume that you already know how to make chains and the basic crochet stitches so slip knot and then we have one two three four five Okay, once you've done your 53 chains, then we will start making our stitch pattern in the eighth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and in the eighth chain from the hook, we will be making a double crochet. Okay, next the pattern states to chain two and to skip two chains. And make a double crochet in the next chain chain two skip two chains and make a double crochet in the next chain and this is what we repeat across Now I just wanted to give you a little uh, kind of pointer of how I like to work into my chain. So I'm just chaining two and we are skipping two, but instead of working into like the V's, I like to turn my chain and work into the bumps of the chain. So you would just count the same. We have one and two stitches that we're skipping and into that third back bump that's where I'm going to be working my double crochet I just think it gives a neater edge and you, then you have you know the V's at the bottom and the V's at the top okay so I'm going to continue doing double crochet chain two skip two double crochet to the end of the row now when we've done our last double crochet we're going to chain five and this chain five counts as our first double crochet and chain two space so we are going to skip that first space here we go now we can see skip that first space and into the next stitch work a double crochet so now when we look at our instructions they say that we are going to make double crochet in double crochet and two double crochets in the chain two space for a total of four more times so we are going to have a total of 13 double crochets now this chain five space doesn't count so beginning from that double crochet after the chain five and now I'm gonna make two double crochets in the chain two space which means we've completed three double crochets of the 13 double crochet and the double crochet 
that's four double crochets of the 13. And in the next chain two space, we're going to work two double crochets. And in the double crochet, we're going to work a double crochet. Two double crochets in the chain two space. Double crochet, two double crochets. Okay, so that's 12. And now I'm going to make the last stitch of the 13 double crochets. And let me just double check. We have, uh -huh. yep. So what we have here is our double, a uh, chain five that counts as a double crochet and chain two space, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen double crochets. So now what we're going to do is we are going to chain two and we're going to skip that space, the next space after these thirteen double crochets. And we are going to do a double crochet on top of the double crochet. And we're going to continue making double crochets until we have thirteen double crochets again. So once we've completed the 13 double crochets, we're going to chain two, skip two, and work 13 double crochets. And we're going to continue this sequence until we reach the last chain space. Now this is the last chain space, so I'm going to chain two and work a double crochet on top of the chain three. So we're skipping two chains to create our chain two space, and then we're working a double crochet on top of the chain three. And thus ends row one. Okay, because that um, double crochet chain two skip two that we did, that's our base row. So this 13 double crochet is our row one. To begin row two, we are going to start with a chain of five. And then we turn and we're going to skip the chain space. And we're going to work a double crochet in the next four double crochets. So this is one. Okay. And this is two, three, and four. Okay, so once we've completed those four double crochets, we are going to chain two and work a treble, skip two, sorry, and work a treble in the next stitch. Once we've completed our treble, we are going to chain two again, and we are going to skip two stitches and work one double crochet in the next four double crochets. So the sequence for row two is four double crochets, chain two, skip two, treble, chain two, skip two, four double crochets. And once we reach the next chain space, we chain two, skip the chain space, and repeat our sequence of four double crochets. And we skip the chain space. Okay, so for row two, sorry, our sequence is going to be four double crochets, chain two, skip two, 
treble, chain two, skip two, four double crochet. Okay, so this is the sequence that we're going to repeat um, along our row, and I will meet you back here at the end of the row, which is our chain two space. So here we are in our last four double crochets, so that's two, three, and four. Okay, so now as usual we are going to chain two and do a double crochet in the third chain from the hook. It's kind of easy to keep track of where this goes because we've consistently left our chain spaces in the same position, our chain two spaces, I should say. Okay, this is what we've got. And now we're going to start row three with a chain of five. Three, four, and five. Okay, turn, skip the first chain space, and then we are going to do one double crochet in the next two double crochets, okay? So that's here and here. One double crochet, two double crochet, and then we are going to chain five. One, two, and we are going to skip the double crochet in the chain space and we are going to work a single crochet into the treble. And then we are going to do a chain of five again and we're going to skip our space and two double crochets and we are going to make double crochets in the last two double crochets of this space and chain two skip the chain space and two double crochet because this is going to start our sequence again and it's going to be for row three it's going to be two double crochets chain five single crochet in the treble chain five two double crochets. So that's two double crochets right before our chain space that we're going to skip. And we're going to repeat this until, we... hello. <laughs> so we, to end row three, we're going to chain five and we're going to turn, okay? And we're going to do four double crochets. So we're going to be making a double crochet in the next two double crochets and two double crochets in the chain five space. And you can make these like I'm doing here around the chain or you could go actually into the chain to do your two double crochets. It just doesn't really matter. Okay, now we are have four double crochets here. So we are going to continue with a chain of two and we're going to make a double crochet in the single crochet, okay? So that means we're skipping the rest of our chains. And for the, to complete the sequence, what we're going to do is chain two, and we are going to make two double crochets into the chain space, as well as one double crochet in each of the remaining double crochet. And we're going to end the sequence by doing two chains to account for our chain two space. Okay, so this is what we have after we've finished our first uh, sequence. And basically what we're going to repeat across the row is four double crochets, chain two, double crochet in the single crochet, chain two, four double crochets. Okay, and that's what we're repeating along our row. 
So we end row four with a chain two and a double crochet in the third chain from the hook, and this is what we've been doing, right? So we know this one already. And now row five is very similar to row one. We're gonna be working 13 double crochets. But first we're gonna chain five, and then we are going to turn. Okay. And to work our 13 double crochets, these are worked between the chain two spaces, and we will work a double crochet in each stitch and two double crochets in the chain two spaces. So one, two, three, four we've reached the first chain two space so we're going to work two double crochets here so it's five and six uh, seven eight uh, nine Just grab some more yarn. Ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Okay, chain two, skip the chain space and work thirteen double crochets. So our sequence is going to be. 13 double crochets between the chain two spaces. Okay, and we're gonna repeat this along the row. It's 13, chain two, and now I'm gonna do 13 again. Chain two space, we'll meet here. Okay, so to end, of course, chain two, double crochet on top of the chain three or in the chain three. <laughs> okay, so now we've done five rows of this flower stitch and we're gonna start our sixth row. So row six is gonna start with a chain of five and then we're turning. Okay, we're just gonna skip the space like we usually do and do a double crochet. Then we're gonna chain two, skip two, and work a double crochet. Chain two, skip two, and work a double crochet. And this is the repeat that we are going to work in this row. <laughs> so double crochet, chain two, skip two, double crochet. Sometimes words fail, guys. But anyway, I will meet you at the end of this row. Okay, so here we are in the last chain two double crochet situation. And this row six completes the sequence for our flower stitch, okay? So this is what we have here. We're gonna be repeating rows one to row six once more to get our flower stitch border for the shield made in top. So that's again, rows one through six one more time. This is what it, one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? There we are. Now that we have two pattern repeats of this flower stitch, we're gonna continue working with the front panel of the Shield Maiden top. And what we're gonna do next is start with row one of our front panel okay so read your pattern make sure you know where you're at because now we're going to be doing half double crochets so start with a chain two and your eight millimeter hook and we're going to be completing 45 half double crochets for the smallest size you can distribute these however you want but i'm distributing them by doing one dou half double crochet in the first chain space skipping that double crochet working two half double crochets in the chain space next to that one and then just working a half double crochet in the stitch so we're going to be repeating by this sequence of doing a half double crochet in each stitch and then two half double crochets in the chain two space until we reach um, the next to last chain 
space, okay? As I said, you can distribute these 45 stitches however you want, and I'll meet you back here in this space. Okay, so we are back and now what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be skipping the double crochet and I'm going to be working only one double crochet into that um, last chain space and then working a half double crochet into the half double, the third <laughs> chain, okay? So once again, we're supposed to have 45 double crochets for the smallest size, but please refer to your uh, to the written pattern so that you can see what your stitch count is supposed to be. And I noticed a mistake when I was making it, so I had to go back and fix that. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to continue with the second row, and it's going to be a half double crochet row as well. So we are going to chain two. Okay, and then we're going to just work a half double crochet in each stitch, skipping the first one, of course, because the chain two counts as our first half double crochet, as established in the pattern notes. Okay, so just continue making a half double crochet in each stitch. Okay, here we've completed the second row of half double crochets, and once we've done that, we are going to be switching from our 8mm hook to our 7mm hook. And we are just going to continue making a half double crochet in each stitch, uh, as indicated in the pattern, so we are going to work that from rows 3 to 16. Okay, so half double crochet, remember your chain two at the beginning counts as your first half double crochet. So just keep doing your half double crochets in each stitch. Here, we're not gonna be decreasing. The only thing we've changed is our hook size from eight millimeters to seven millimeters, and that in itself provides a little bit of a decrease uh, shaping because of course your stitches are gonna be smaller now. So just keep crocheting and I will meet you back here when it's time to do our sleeve, uh, our mole shaping, sorry. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that I've completed 16 rows here and we are gonna continue with row 17. Uh, row 17 says to chain one and turn. And what we're going to be doing now is slip stitching into each of the following five stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Perfect. So we have slip stitched into five stitches, just double checking this, but the in that last stitch, we're going to be doing a chain two, which is going to count as our first stitch. So in reality, we've only skipped four stitches. We've slip stitched into five, but we skip, skipped four. Okay, so that's chain two counts as our first half double crochet. Now we are going to make a half double crochet in the next 18 stitches. Okay, so once we've completed that, we're going to leave chain two and leave all the remaining stitches unworked. And we're going to start with our V shaping. So this chain two counts as our first stitch, right? So we don't work into that because that's what we've been doing. And then we're going to skip one stitch and work into that third stitch a half double crochet and we have decreased one stitch and then just half double crochet in each stitch to the end of the row this is row 18 okay so we've completed this row 18 with a that was our decrease row sorry 
So we're gonna chain two and turn, and now we begin row 19. So for row 19, what we're gonna be doing is just doing a half double crochet in each stitch. This row has no decreases, which means that we have the same stitch count that we had in row 18. So if we start it with 18 half double crochets, we will have 17 half double crochets. And if we started, you know, with 17, 16. Okay, so this is row 19 finished by chaining two and turning. For row 20, we are going to do a decrease once again because we're at that middle V part. So we skip the next stitch and do a half double crochet in the following stitch. Again, this is a decrease and we complete the row by doing a half double crochet in each stitch. And remember, we end the row by chaining two and turning. So for row 21, we repeat row 19. Uh, this is out of focus, okay. Um, yeah, there we go, okay. So row 19 was make a half double crochet in each stitch, no decreases. So that is what we are doing for row 21 as well. And I will meet you back here when it is time to crochet row 22. Now, we are going to be repeating rows 18 and 19 until we have a total of 10 stitches left for the smallest size. Now, what this means is that we're gonna be alternating a decrease row and a non-decrease row until we get to those 10 half double crochets. Since this is row 22, this is going to be a decrease row. So basically, if you've noticed your even rows are your decrease rows and your odd rows are your non-decrease rows. So I've just completed a decrease and I'm gonna continue doing a half double crochet in each stitch. Right, so since this is row 22 and it was a decrease row, that means that row 23 will be a non-decrease row. So just remember what I said about your odd rows being your non-decrease rows. And I will meet you back here when we've had uh, completed, sorry, our decreases for this um, V panel. Okay, so this is what our finished V panel looks like. Now we're gonna complete the next one. So to complete or start actually our next V panel, we're gonna attach our yarn to the left of that um, V stitch that we have there. So like the first stitch, we're attaching to the left of that stitch right in the center of our panel. So I'm just attaching by doing a chain two, which also counts as our first half double crochet. And then I'm just gonna continue making a half double crochet in each stitch, stopping when we have four stitches left at the end of this row, okay? Because if you remember, this is our armhole shaping row. So we need to leave those stitches, which the same number of stitches that we left on this side. Okay, so that'll be four half double crochets remaining. That's when we've completed this row. Half double crochets. All right, so I have four stitches remaining here. One, two, three, and four because the chain two counts as that first stitch. So now we're essentially going to be working our V in kind of reverse order, okay? so. We're gonna be starting from the armhole and we're gonna be moving towards the V. So this would be row 19, uh, sorry, row 18. Row 18 is a decreased row as we've already established. So we're gonna do a half double crochet in each stitch until we reach um, two stitches before the end of our row. Sorry, I keep moving out of frame, but I have a very small frame to work with so that you can still see what I'm doing. Okay, so we have two stitches left and that includes our chain two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip the next stitch and work a half double crochet into the chain two. This counts as a decrease. Okay, so now we are going to chain two and turn. Remember, this is row 19, and row 19 is not a decrease row, so we're just gonna work a half double crochet in each stitch. And I really wish you would focus. There we go. Okay, 
So for row 20, chain two and turn, right? And make a half double crochet in each stitch until you are two stitches away from the end of the row because row 20 is a decrease row. It's funny, it seems that when the camera is not in focus, then I'm out of the shot. <laughs> it's one or the other, right? Right, so just keep making your half double crochets until you are two stitches away from the end of the row. Of course, if you prefer another decrease method, you could also do that. Just remember to decrease at the center of the top because that's where our V design is at. So as I said, we're essentially reversing the order of our decrease rows for this panel. So we're going to skip the next stitch and we're going to work a half double crochet on top of our chain two. Now we're going to chain two in turn and this is going to be row 21. Row 21 is an odd row which means it's no decreases. So we're just going to work a half double crochet in each stitch. So as I mentioned previously, we're essentially uh, working our reverse order of instructions from the other panel, but we are still going to be working a decrease row and a non-decrease row until we have decreased to the 10 stitches that the pattern calls for. Okay, so this is my no decrease row because it's row 21. That means for row 22, I will do a decrease. Row 23, I will not decrease and so on and so forth until I have completed my decrease rounds to have 10 half double crochets left. So this is what our V is looking like. You can see how it's forming here, right? We have that slant that forms the V. And I just want to show you in the original pattern what that looks like. Because I said the yarns are super different. And so is the final outcome. Okay, so here we have that V. You can see that we've formed. We're now working on this left side here, which is, you know, your right side when you're wearing it. And let me zoom out. I think we can see that V much better. So this is our front V, okay? So this, as I said, is our front panel. For the back panel, we are going to repeat the flower stitch portion, and th which is this here, and then we are just gonna work the same instructions until we reach that armhole shaping. So those slip stitches, we will also be doing those in the back. The only difference is that we are not going to be working a V. We're not gonna be dividing our stitches. We're just gonna keep working our half double crochets until we get to the same height of the front or the same row count, which, whichever one of your gauge actually matches from your front and your back panel. Once you've completed your front and your back, we are going to place our panels front sides facing, so right sides facing in other words, and you can tell that by looking at your base row and seeing which direction your double crochets face. So we're going to put our panels right sides together and we are going to seam along the edge. Now in the pattern that uh, I completed, I left a little slit because I just thought it looked cuter so basically just attach your yarn and work whatever method you would like until you reach your armhole shaping. And then you're also going to seam your shoulders and that will be your garment all seamed together. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to share with you is the difference in um, the fabrics because you can see this one is very drapey it's very loose because it is an Aran worsted yarn and this one it's a super bulky yarn worked with an eight millimeter crochet hook so it's actually a lot denser substituting for yarns it is very important to keep in mind uh, that when you substitute you can actually get a completely different fabric so as i said before this one that i'm using is casa sol fili color in the, the l weight and a comparable to the super bulky in Casa Sol Fili Color I think would be an XL and that might even be just slightly thinner than the Bernat Homemaker Home Deco yarn. So 
remember that to access the full pattern you can just check out my website crochetcakes.com and there you will find uh, some pictures of the finished item as well as pattern notes and measurements and things like that that are actually very very helpful when making a pattern one of the most important things to keep in mind is the gauge you can see that with the Bernat uh, yarn I had 10 half double crochets stitches and nine half double crochet rows this measurement is taken over four inches or 10 centimeters whichever you prefer so if your yarn doesn't match those 10 half double crochet stitches then your gauge is different and your fabric will look different so here I just wanted to quickly demonstrate again just how you know flowy and drapey this fabric actually is because again I've just used an Aran weight yarn with an eight millimeter hook and actually because of that difference in gauge I would stop my decreases with these 13 decreases that I have here and that would actually compare with the placement in the original pattern or the original shield made in top okay so here I'm holding them side by side and you can just see the differences. Now I'm going to be doing a gauge swatch for you guys just to compare and see um, because here I already know with the Shield Maiden and the Super Bulky that I have 10 half double crochet stitches in 4 inches. Now with the Casa Suede Filicolor yard I'm just going to grab a ruler because that's what I had handy but tape measure, uh, gauge ruler specifically, anything like that will work. And I'm just going to mark uh, place my ruler right at the end of a stitch so that I can see that I'm counting a full stitch and I am actually going to count until I get to the four inches and I have nine half double crochets in four inches which is a whole stitch of difference and that means that my gauge my tension is actually a lot looser with the Casa Sol Filicolor yarn than it is with the Bernat homemaker home decor yarn okay so again this is really important to keep in mind because that will mean that you may have to take out rows or add rows here or there or you might have to take out stitches or add stitches if your gauge is different so once again, I just want you guys to remember that substituting yarns can be a little bit tricky, but uh, you just have to really account for your gauge. And please check out the full written pattern on my website, crochetcakes.com. The link to the full written pattern can be found in the description box below. See you.